Welcome to Hartman Math. This is lesson 2-7, where we continue looking at quadratic functions, focusing on quadratic equations. We're going to look at uh, solving quadratic equations using square roots. We're going to start with skills uh, based in square roots. So in order to do that, we need to know our perfect squares. I kind of like when I'm doing this to have a red pen available. Uh, to write this, so 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. Go ahead and keep going on down the list. And when we talk about perfect squares, we're talking about numbers like 1, 4, 9, 16, the right side of our column here, of our equal sign. Go ahead and finish. And then the first thing we're going to look at is the multiplication property for square roots, which also applies to other roots as well. We'll get into later, such that the square root of a times b is the square root of a times the square root of b. We use that to simplify square roots, such as the square root of 50. We're trying to simplify it, not approximate on a calculator, but write it in what's called its simplest radical form we're looking for is a number in our list of squares that is a factor or evenly divides into 50. And sometimes there may be more than one, so the farther on down the list, the bigger the number, the better. It's going to mean less work in the end. So hunt your list. Which of our red numbers, our perfect squares, is a factor of 50? It's 25. So we want to factor it into 25 times 2 makes 50. So like this, we're going to split that up to be square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And we should know that the square root of 25 is 5. So our final answer is 5 square root of 2, which really implies 5 times the square root of 2 in that simplest radical form. You try this. So pause the video here as you simplify the square root of 24. Again, you're looking at your list of perfect squares. Which of those is a factor? Split it up. What times what? One never really helps because it doesn't change anything. Hit play when you're ready. All right, the perfect square that we're looking for is 4. 4 is a factor of 24. It evenly divides into 24. It's 4 times 6. So we break it up into the square root of 4 times the square root of 6. The square root of 4 is 2. So our final answer is 2 times the square root of 6. Example number 2. This time we've already got a number on the outside of our root. That's okay. We'll wait on that and we'll focus on our root. Again, look at our list of perfect squares. Which of those perfect squares evenly divides into 45? You're looking for 9. 9 times 5. So we split it up. 3, implying multiplication of the front, times square root of 9, square root of 5. What is the square root of 9? It's 3. So we got 3 times 3 times 5. Now, since both of these are outside the root, we can multiply those together. We should multiply those together. 3 times 3 is 9. Final answer, 9 square root 5. There's also a similar property for division. So if we're handling square roots of fractions, we can break it up. Square root numerator divide by square root denominator. That's the way we're going to go. So for example, number 3, simplify. We've got square root of a fraction. We're going to break it up square root top, square root bottom, numerator, denominator. Now our issue is we would like to rationalize the denominator. Have the denominator be a rational number. Right now, being square root of 3, that is not a rational number. This is a decimal that goes on, for, on forever and ever with no pattern. So what we want to do is actually turn it into an integer, really a whole number. So focus on the bottom. We want to fix the bottom. We're going to multiply top and bottom by the denominator. So since it's root 3, we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. Now our product property from previous, 
we can multiply these together, put them under one root, two times three is six. Similarly, on the bottom, we multiply those together, we get the square root of nine, which is three. So two identical square roots multiplied together will just give you always that number, no square root. Square root of three times square root of three is three. If we were doing the square root of 11 times square root of 11, that would be 11. Square root of 27 times square root of 27 is 27. There's our final answer. We do not reduce from here. This part's under a root. This part is not. They do not mix. It stays as is. So go ahead and try this one. It's actually already broken up for you. It's ready to fix. Pause until you're ready. We need to fix our denominator, which is the square root of 2. We're going to multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of 2. The square root of 5 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 10. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 2. And that's as far as we can go. Example number 4, this one looks tricky. We could immediately fix by multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 48, but that may not be our best option. We can kind of reverse this, go from right side to left side of our property that we wrote down, and just write this as the square root of one fraction. And we do that because I kind of noticed that 3 and the 48 have a common factor. We could reduce that fraction. What evenly divides into both? does. So let's reduce it. We get the square root of 1 over the square root of 16. Now let's go back into this form, break it up. We're ready to do that now. I don't think we need to fix this. It's really close to already being fixed. Why don't we just evaluate on in the numerator? What's the square root of 1? 1. What's the square root of 16 in the denominator? 4. Simplify, simplify our answer, 1 over 4, turns out this was rational. We just had to write it as the integer that it was. Example number 5. No root on top, root on the bottom. So it's really not in that form, but we do have a problem with the square root on the bottom. I think it's ready to fix right away. Let's do it. Let's multiply top and bottom by the square root of 5. Now, on top, when we multiply in the numerator, the 10 is not in a root. The 5 is in a root, so we cannot multiply those together. We have to keep them separate. We have a 10, we have a root 5. On the bottom, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. And now, because the 10 and the 5 are outside, that we can simplify. What is 10 divided by 5? It is 2, so that is implied to be on top as 2 root 5. If these had been reversed, if that had been a 5 and this had been a 10, we can reduce it, but the 2 would be on the bottom. It would be root 5 over 2, so watch out for that. So those are just some of the square root skills that we need to have before we move into solving quadratic equations by the square root method. Example number six is a solve. We want to solve for x. So we're going to start by isolating x squared. Now, before we really get into that, how we would know that we want to do this as a square root method problem is there are no parentheses, and it doesn't have any number of x. It has x squared, but it doesn't say like plus 6x, minus 2x, anything like that. It doesn't have an x term. It has x squared, but no x's. And that's always a good time the square root method, where we isolate the x squared, unlike factoring, we don't want to get it equal to zero, we want to get x squared by itself, let's get rid of the plus two, let's go minus two both sides. So isolate what is being squared. Now, we want to get x by itself, so we want to get rid of the exponent. And the opposite, or inverse to squaring is taking a square root. So we're going to take a square root on both sides, but one thing to think about, 
think we might even be able to come up with the solutions at this point, and then we'll see kind of the process for when it gets a little bit more challenging. What value of x could we square and get 25? And you might think 5. And that's correct. 5 is a solution, but it's not the only number that we could square and get 25. What other number could you square and also get 25? You should be thinking of negative 5. Negative 5 multiplied by itself is still positive 25. So in solving this, we're going to need to get two solutions, a positive and a negative. So when we square root both sides, we're going to remember a positive and a negative. And we do that immediately when you take the square root on both sides. When I take the square root on the left, I get x. We just undid the exponent. When I take the square root on the right, we're going to show the root. We're going to have the plus or minus now. Do not wait for the end. Now we know this. Okay, the square root of 25 is 5. So our final answer or answers are solutions. x equals positive 5, x equals negative 5 are the solutions. And those are the steps that we're going to take. We're going to isolate. Square root, don't forget the plus minus because we're going to get two solutions almost every time. Example number seven. Not ready to square root, isolate. Let me get rid of the two. We're going to divide both sides by two. Now we're ready to square root both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. Square root eight. Maybe that's our answer. Maybe we can't go farther because eight's not a perfect square. So this might be our answer, but we do need to see if we can simplify like we've done previous in this lesson. So look at your list of perfect squares. Do many of them evenly divide into eight? Yes, so we can go further. We're gonna break this up into four is what we're looking for. Four times two, so square root four times square root two this plus minus still stays in front, and the square root of 4 is 2. So our final answer, x equals positive 2 root 2, x equals negative 2 root 2. We can use the plus minus notation. All right, pause here as you solve this one. Hit play when you're ready. We're going to isolate and get rid of that plus 1. Now we're going to get rid of that 3. Now we're going to get rid of that exponent. We're going to square root both sides. And remember, plus minus. And since 33 does not have any factors that are perfect squares, that evenly divided into 33, besides 1, it does not help. It does not change anything. That's our final answer. Example number 8. Little bit different in that we have parentheses and square, but it's still the same steps that we want to take. We want to isolate what's being squared. And right now, that's the x plus 5. So let's get rid of the plus 1. Let's get rid of the 3. We can't get at the plus 5 yet because it's buried inside the parentheses and the exponent applies to all of that. So the next thing would be to get rid of the exponent. We're going to square root both sides, plus or minus over here. Now we've got two things that we need to do. We need to get rid of the plus 5 because we want to get x by itself. That's our goal in solving. And we're going to, I think we're going to need to break down the root 20. So the square root 20, the perfect square evenly goes into the 20, 4. So 4 times 5. We're going to do, and I like that when we do the add subtract, I prefer, it doesn't have to be, but I prefer it be, that it be in front of the plus minus. So negative 5, I'm subtracting 5 on both sides, plus or minus, square root 4, square root 5, we broke up the 20. Square root of 4 is 2. The final answer is negative 5 plus or minus 2 root 5. I do not want to add these together. Because that's not a 2, it's attached here, it's a 2 root 5. We can only combine root 5s with other root 5s, so we're going to have to leave this as is. Now, if that root 5 was not there, we would definitely go further. We would say negative 5 plus 2 is 
negative 3. Negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. Those are my solutions. But this does have the root, so that's as far as we can go. And that's it for today. See you next time.